In my last uh, video, thread cutting on the lathe part four, I touched up on the subject of uh, the thread cut or the threading dial and what it what it is and what it's used for. Well, since my uh, my hard hinge didn't doesn't have a threading dial, I, I borrowed this one from my dad's atlas and attempted to explain how it worked. But uh, I don't know about you, but theory kind of bores me, and I think it does you you guys too, because I'm sure I, I noticed some some eyes fogging over and some thousand yard stares even over the internet. So I thought I'd uh, revisit this subject and put the threading dial back on my dad's lathe where it belongs and give you a little practical demonstration of, of, of how it works. Now I know it's, it's easy to look up on a chart and say and figure out which of these marks you have to engage on for whatever thread, thread you're cutting, but I find it easier to remember, how, remember things like that if I know the why behind it. So let me let me attempt to demonstrate the why behind the threading dial, and what you know the mystery of what mark you can engage on and what marks you can't. All right, if if you notice that when we move the carriage, this threading dial rotates. Okay, well what it's doing is it's it's telling us where our carriage is relative to the to the lead screw. And the reason it's doing that is is so we can know exactly where to engage our our half nuts. So that the threading tool will always go back in the same position on the thread we're cutting. We don't have to worry about cutting a thread halfway between or some some ridiculous thing like that and, and ruining our thread. So let me let me give a little demo on on, on how this works. If we, if we line up with the number one, okay, line the number one mark up with the with the indicator mark on the dial, and we'll put a little mark on this piece of masking type I have stuck on my dad's lathe here. All right now if we, if we rotate, if we move the carriage down so the dial rotates half a, half of uh, halfway around to the two, put another mark. Okay, this was one and this is two. If we measure those two marks you can see they're one inch apart. All right, so the distance between numbered marks is one inch. Some dials have uh, two numbered marks like this one, some dials have four. Matter of fact, a lot of them have four. Um, all right, in this case, since we only have two, if we go all the way around, put another mark, you can see the, the total distance we travel is two inches for one revolution of the dial. Uh, if it had four numbered marks, that this would be four inches. Okay, one revolution of the dial would be four inches. But the important thing is to see that uh, numbered marks on the dial the distance between numbered marks is one inch. And why is that important? Well, if we're cutting an even number of threads or an odd number of threads, any pitch, whether it's a 20 or a 13 or a 12, as long as it's a, a, a whole numbered, um, as long as the threads have a whole number on them, you're not fractional threads, we can engage our half nut or our dial any, on any one inch increment or any numbered dial or any unnumbered dial if we want to do it that way. I, I prefer to stick with the with the numbered dials. It's easy to keep track of. Now on uh, even number of threads we have a little bit of an option. Okay, Even number of threads are divisible by two. The 12 pitch for instance divide by two we get six. So we can do the same thing on our dial here. We can we can engage halfway between the numbered lines on one of these un unnumbered ones here and it'll still work. It'll work fine. Okay, So that gives us a lot more opportunities to engage our dial. We don't have to wait around for the, the right number to come up. So an even number of threads you can engage on any numbered division or any num unnumbered division. If we're cutting an odd number of threads we can't do that because odd numbers are not divisible by two. Uh, 13 threads per inch, can't divide it by two and get a whole number. You can get you can divide it by two, but you'll get six and a half. All right, so that means if we engage on a division between the numbered lines, we're going to put a thread right on top of the thread we, we cut the first time and totally ruin it. Okay, then there's always the uh, the odd or the fractional number of threads. Some pipe threads. For instance, like one inch, a one inch pipe thread has 11 and a half threads per inch. Well, we can't, we can't engage on a one inch increment for a, 
for an 11 and a half pitch thread because you can't engage on a half. If we, if we do, we'll put a thread right on top of our old one, 11 and a half. It's not a whole number. So we have to go, we can only gauge, engage on a 11 and a half thread every two inches. Okay, two times 11 and a half is 23. Okay, so that's that's a pain pain in the butt to, to machine a, a half pitch thread because you can only engage your thread dial every four revolutions. So it's a lot of waiting around. All right, so I have a setup here to to demonstrate the the right and wrong way to use a thread dial. Um, I have the the one inch twelve thread that we cut in the last video mounted in the chuck, and I'm I'm getting ready to to make a nut to fit this thread. So I have a an internal threading tool made up on a boring bar and I've got this thing pointed or I got it lined up with the thread just so you can see what happens when you engage on the wrong line on the thread dial. All right, I also got my little paper trick to backlit paper trick so you can see what's going on a little easier. So let's turn this thing on and see what happens. You can see the thread dial going around and now we're cutting an even number of threads that means I can engage the half nut on any numbered or any unnumbered mark on the dial. Let's try the two here. Alright, I'm just going to let this thing go over the, get over the thread and then I'm going to shut the spindle off and let it close to a stop leaving the half nut engaged. Okay, now if we back our tool out until it goes in, starts cutting in or going into the thread, you can see it's perfectly aligned with the thread. All right. All right. Let's try it again. That was that was on the two. Let's try engaging it on a, an unnumbered division. Remember, I said an even. You can do it on any numbered or unnumbered division. Whoops! I missed that one. Let's try it the next time around. Missed that one too. Start doing my camera in one hand and the left hand on the half nut. Alright, so let's shut the spindle off, let it close to a stop. Okay, now you can see that the thread, the cutting tool goes right into the thread, perfectly aligned. Okay, just like before. Alright. Now here's what happens if you do it wrong. Let's go back out here, start it up. Okay, let's say uh, we engage, uh, we miss our mark by a little bit, like about here, okay? Half nuts engaged, tool bits heading for the thread, let's see what happens. Shut the spindle off, leave the half nut engaged. Now look at how the, th the tool lines up with the thread, okay? We're in big trouble. Okay, what we've got is we, we cut a thread right on top of the original thread we cut. That would ruin your day. Okay, so don't do that. All right. Hope you hopefully you picked up a few pointers with this, and hopefully you understand the concept behind the thread dial. That's all I have for the moment.